Wonderful world of Disney. Tonight, on the wonderful world of Disney, Ferry of the Great St. Bernard. Born at the time of the Napoleonic Wars, around the year 1800. His name was Barry. Hey, where do you think you're going? When he first opened his eyes, Barry saw before him a young novice in the Order of St. Bernard, Martin. According to science, such a first impression often has a lasting effect. Barry and Martin became inseparable. Even as a puppy, Barry was different. He was bigger, smarter. He learned so quickly. It seemed that Martin could get more out of Barry than anyone else. Still, Julius, the kennel master, worried. They were too close. Suppose someday Martin was not around. How well would Barry behave then? Old ducks. Smart. They have to. But Barry is just not true. Curious. Isn't that what training is for? To teach judgment and discipline? Barry, try. Please. Soon Barry was competing on equal terms with the older dogs. He was ready for the final test to prove himself a full-fledged rescue dog by locating a stranger buried somewhere. Barry, no! What's he after? Barry went the other way. It seemed he had failed, but he had not. He had sensed the avalanche and had saved the stranger caught beneath it. Barry, the great St. Bernard, had made his first rescue. No other dog in the annals of the hospice had done nearly as well. Martin! He still has to learn to work alone. By himself. Without you. If he ever does, I'll give you my alpenstock. During these years, Barry's fame has spread. He has distinguished himself above all the others by his rescues. He has also become a father. And like a good parent, he still finds time to enjoy his family. Barry. All right, all right, enough. They've worn you out, have they? Come on. Ah. Ah. Look at them. They look so much like him. <laughs> Who else should they look like? In you go, sire. Yeah. He 
she's got quite a family now. With her two latest, it makes 15. 15? 13. Number 12 and number 13. No, 15. You're forgetting that. Forgetting? I can give you name and breeding of every dog that has been in this hospice since I came here in 1780. All right, forgetting was the wrong word. I beg your pardon. All I meant is that you forgot, excuse me, overlooked Barry's two grandchildren. Well, if you include grandchildren, uh, yes, 15. Thank the Lord, you were not the first thing they saw. What? If you had been, they'd be as attached to you as Barry is. Oh, Julius, please, let Julius, please, Julius, please. It's got truth. When Barry first opened his eyes, he saw you. Only you. And ever since, you and he are inseparable. Are you still worried about that? You know very well Barry doesn't need me. You remember my offer? I'll give you my Alpenstock if ever Barry worked alone without you. And you notice. I still have it. Ah, hold on, go on. Martin, Julius. Another one, Father. And this time, very generous. 500 gilder. It came by carrier. Listen. Okay, John. Come. Or not, Father of the Hospice of Greater Saint Bernard. Um, I'm translating from the German. <coughs> or not, Father, so and so on, I send you this small contribution. Small. <laughs> in gratefulness that, while in danger of my life, on Saint Bernard Pass in the Great Storm, the 20th of the last month, I was rescued through the grace of God and the, uh, the intervention of your patrol and the dogs. Permit me, Father, to add that never have I seen such dogs so well trained. Uh, in Spesando, in a special, in a special of the dog Barry. I tell his praises to everyone, for I do believe that had he not found me and lay down beside to warm me, I would most surely have perished from the cruel cold. Your devoted servant, Wilhelm Baron von Reinschad. Baron von Reinschad? No wonder it's the largest contribution. Yeah. It is needed. Every donation is so needed. So many travelers to help, to care for. How many has he saved already? Twenty at least. Yes. Truly a remarkable dog. Martin, a moment, if you will. Of course, Father. Time is very swift, my son. In another two months, you will have been with us three full years. Yes, Father. The end of your novitiate. If you wish to become a canon, time to take your vows. Martin, it is not a decision to be made lightly. The life of a member of the Order of Saint Bernard is not an easy one. I have come to realize that, Father. Have you also changed your reason for being here? My reason? You sought some kind of revenge against the mountains. Recall telling me that. Yes, I remember. By now you should realize vengeance should never be a reason for taking your vows. Service to God calls for a higher... They seem to know the storms. Yes, Father. Another one? Yes. And the last barely over. Seems like a month since we had a good weather. Who's on patrol now? Brother Angelo and Brother David. Dominic, sound the alarm. You and Gregor. Take the patrol toward the summit with Turk and Devil. Martin, we will look the devil's slide.
must be something wrong. Barry, we don't act this way. Help me! Help me! My God! At these altitudes, the unwary traveler is often caught off guard by the chaotic shifts in weather. The blinding snow and strong gusts which swept him off the ledge have within minutes given way to blue skies, and they can recur without warning in as little time. Is he alive? I can't tell from here. see what I mean, do you, Martin? Julius, all I say is that you make too much of it. Do you deny he should have stayed where he was instead of coming over to you? Uh, the rescue was complete. The man was no longer called. What does it matter? What does it matter? It matters, Martin. It's part of discipline. Next time, he may forget his duty entirely. If you're in danger, he may turn over to you instead of... Well, oh, Julius, if, if you're imagining things. You're too close. That's what I mean. You and Barry are too close. It 
Summertime in the High Alps. A time when, for a few crystal days, the patrol can be a playful pastime for Martin and his dog. And Barry is his dog. By now, it seems quite clear that Julius is right. They are too close, these two. Come on, Barry. They know it, and they revel in it. Today, the bubbling stream, so hazardous in a storm, is simply a pleasant spot for a refreshing drink of ice clear water. Yet nature is never as peaceful as she seems. Danger can come from any direction. Where you were? We're close to the edge. Stay here, where you're safe. Barry, find him. Hospice. Go to the hospice. This is no time for hostilities. He has his orders, and he obeys. tracks this large is not to be taken lightly. Barry will need more than his great courage if their paths should cross again. And so Martin fashions a collar for him, studded with dagger-sharp spikes, just in case. Simon, Dr. Bernie, are you leaving? Yes, but I'm better now. Except for this souvenir. The weather is mild, the village is downhill. We should have no trouble. Martin. I don't know if I thank you and Barry for saving my life. Yes, Doctor. You did. Well, even so, let me thank you again. You and the first of the Barry Hounds. Barry Hounds? I mean, 
Haven't you heard? Yes, that's what people are beginning to call Boris Puppies. He's getting famous everywhere. Lyon, Genève, Bern. Very hard. <laughs> Say that's what everyone's calling Barry's pups. He's becoming famous. Well, I never favored one dog over another. Julius. But in this case, I can't deny he deserves it. <laughs> well, Doctor, they are waiting for you. Uh, yes, uh, would you excuse me a minute? I'd like a word with Martin. Of course, Doctor. I know that you haven't taken your vows yet. No, I haven't. But quite soon. Let me put it this way. There is another way to save lives without suffering the eternal snow and ice. I save many lives as a doctor. Yes, sir. I know. Have you ever considered being one? Me? A doctor? Yes. No, I had not. Never occurred to me. Martin, my assistant Pierre just here, you Pierre. Now Pierre is leaving me. He served his apprenticeship, and now he's going to be a doctor. So, I need a new assistant. Doctor, I... I don't know what to say. It's a great honor. Oh, please, Martin, I do not ask for an immediate answer. A month, two months, is just something for you to consider. It certainly is. Doctor? Yes? It's better not to delay. You want to be sure of getting home before dark. Of course. Thank you. Thank you for helping us. Goodbye, Martin. And Martin, think about it. Come on, Jules. Bye, Doctor. Thank you. Think about it. Think about what, Martin? Well, if I don't take my vows. Yes? You asked me to be his assistant, to become a doctor like him. A doctor? Well, you do have something to think about. Now on every patrol, Martin carries an extra burden, the decision he must bring himself to make. Barry has been fitted with his new collar, its prongs barely visible through his thick fur. That decision proves to be both far-sighted and fortunate.
credit a long line of fearless ancestors, an indomitable determination to protect his master, and perhaps the needle points of that bristling collar. His instinct tells him to stay and guard his master, but his training will send him back to the hospice for help. things to do than stand around and gossip. And so is Martin. Where is he? Have you seen him? He's in the chapel. The chapel? This time of day? What's he doing there? If Martin is to exchange the gray gown of the novice for the black habit of the canon, his vows will obligate him to practice charity and abstinence and to renounce all personal possessions. How's your head? Much improved. Thank you. It aches, but not from this. My head aches because... I know. I know you're trying to make up your mind. Yes. I don't know why it should be so difficult. I want to become a canon. I want to take my vows. But still, I'm confused. Martin, did you know that once I wanted to become a canon? You? It was when I first arrived at the hospice years ago. But you came to be the canon master. Yes. But even more, I wanted to serve as a canon. Why didn't you? Unfortunately, I am not a scholar like you. I couldn't learn Latin. I failed history. Since I failed my studies, I couldn't become a canon. No matter how badly I wanted to. I remember how much I prayed. Now my prayers are for you. Every night I pray that you will become what I could not. A canon. Father, I'm sorry. No, no, it is I who am sorry. I didn't intend to overhear. However, since I have... Julius, we cannot persuade him. He has to decide for himself. Father, I do want to take my vows. I do. If you had said it more quietly, Martin, I would be more apt to believe you. Father, what shall I do? Ask yourself a question. A question? Yes. A simple question. How much are you willing to give up? Can you give up this? You know you must dispose of all your worldly possessions. If you go down to the village, we not have two. Yes. I knew that Dr. Bernet had asked you to be his assistant. He said I could become a doctor. I would save lives. 
Yes, sir. Worth recalling, I don't deny it. But, Father, we save lives too. Yes. So then, what is the difference? Is it better to save lives here or there? Certainly, it's comfortable there. Life is much more pleasant. I don't care about that, Father. No? I confess I do. When the wind howls and the freezing cold creeps through these walls and I shiver through the night, I confess that many times I have wished for that kind of comfort. Martin, there is more than one way to do God's work. You're fortunate to have two ways to serve him. It is a dilemma, I know. But in the end, only in you can make that choice. Only you can know which path you want to take. Of vanity. Would I look better with this? No, no. It's not yours yet. Well, time to train the dogs. Dogs obviously cannot train one another. They can learn from one another. It is well known that the offspring of good rescue dogs learn more readily than those not so well bred. Down and crawl. These are two of Barry's pups who prove the point. display a lively interest in whatever the older one does. They will try to imitate him with varying degrees of success. Dig. Make a trail, Barry. never catch up with their famous father. His exploits are already legendary, but they will keep trying to follow in his footsteps. work too, like all else. True. True. I really hate to leave. Leave? You? Don't you think it's time? I've been here forever. Yes, I know. But Julius, why? Why? 
Why? My bones are getting tired, that's why. The longest anyone's dead before is 15 years. I'm overdue. Besides, I have finally found someone who can take over my work. My grandfather passed it to his son, my father to me. I have no son, but... Get the good weather is over. Well, I'm sure you'll do very well. Julius, I... I'm not leaving this very minute. I'll be here a good while yet before I go. The worsening weather does not deter the ever-increasing stream of refugees through the pass. Patrols from the hospice are on constant alert for travelers in trouble. Upstairs, quickly. Yes, very well. Get him some brandy. It seems to be letting up. Please, we'll be able to see. We'd better. So much snow means avalanche. Angelo, will you go on the bus with Barry? Martin, if you will, take Barrow and go down. Come on, Barrow. All right. You and Barry, go. Go! A scant half hour later, skies have cleared. In these brief intervals between storms, the hot sunlight only adds to the possibility of an avalanche. Julius. There has been an avalanche. An old man and some children are cut off. Where? Devil's Night. Lead the way. shepherded by well-meaning but inept leaders, are among the most vulnerable victims of the storm-swept pass. They look pressured, Julius. What are they doing so far away? Who knows? Let's go. Is this all? Is this all of you? Is anyone missing? Oh, we better get them back while we can. Barry and I will lead. Barry, come on.
Give me this. Give me Dago. And you stay behind with the dirt. It is told that three days later, Brother Martin departed this life, deeply mourned, and by none more than Barry. 
It is also told that Barry lived to be 12 years old, an age beyond that of any dog in the annals of the hospice. His record of 40 rescues has never been equaled. To this day, the spiked collar made for him by Martin can be seen in the museum at Bern. And in Paris, this statue commemorates his most famous rescue. But most important are these living memorials, Barry's descendants. Ever since his death, the best one has been given his name. So that today, in the mountains of Switzerland, there still lives a dog named Barry.